You were not meant to be a slave to the grind. You were not meant to trade your life force for money. You can escape gravity. You can unlock your life. You got this. Let's go. Hello and welcome to Unlock Your Life. I'm your host, Jenny Smith. But guys, today I am not alone. I've got a special guest all the way from Vancouver, Canada, Marcus Collius. And I met Marcus through my Dad Edge mastermind I'm in. I was at a conference in St. Louis and this tall dude walks up to me. I meet him and we start talking and he hears that I have a podcast and he says, oh, well, you know, if you're so inclined, I'd love to be on your podcast. And I said, oh yeah, sure. Sounds great. Because he he made an impression on me. You know, this guy's got an aura about him. I was like, absolutely. Let's, let's do it. Well, guys, I didn't realize until I think later that afternoon or maybe the next day. So Marcus is one of the speakers, the keynote speaker at the conference. He's got a $170 million supplement company. He's got three, 400,000 followers on Instagram, just a huge presence. He's now sold that company, is on to his next project, Play a Bigger Game. And I wanted to bring him on here and not, and I felt really lucky. I'm like, man, I'm glad I didn't turn this guy down for the podcast. So Marcus, welcome. Thank you for being on the show, dude. Brother, thank you so much. What a fun introduction. And I'll never forget that because you came back to me later that day and your eyes were just a little bit more like, oh man, so you're definitely going to be on the podcast. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm psyched to be there with you. It was really great hanging out with you. And uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to just spending this time with you, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, let's kind of start at the beginning. Supplement space, I don't know much about it, but I do know that it's extremely competitive. So how did that come about? And why did you sell? What are you doing now? Let's just kind of get into the the genesis of your story. I love it, man. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, the way you described your audience, I think this story should resonate with them because this story starts off I guess kind of slow, maybe. <laughs> I didn't have any money. I, I, we grew up so, so poor. And so when I started my business, man, it was just every penny I had, I was putting towards this thing. And it didn't just start as a supplement company. I had little businesses before that. And it was just doing everything I could in my spare time and part time, everything I could to put together a little bit more money and to learn, which was the most important thing about starting those businesses. And when you start going down that path, and it can start as a side hustle, absolutely. But I learned so much. And then it started to grow and I started to make some money. And then it had me asking questions. Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is there something bigger? Am I going to be able to make the amount of money that I want to make by putting in this much effort? And it kept evolving. And so this supplement company, I started in January of 2005. I felt a real calling to it. I was already selling supplements. I had supplement stores at that point. But the calling was to do something on my own, to create a brand with integrity. And I'm such a fan of helping people with their health. I, I know health is the key to living a more energetic, loving, healthy, happier life. And so I sold supplements for close to 20 years. And I loved my business, Magnum Nutraceuticals. But one day... I felt a calling. God was saying, I got something more for you. I got a bigger game for you to play. And I was called to sell it. And then what an incredible experience. I knew going through that experience, I was going to be able to help other people who are either going through a sale or have sold their business. Because man, is that a crazy time in people's lives. The amount of weird stuff that goes on mentally for people if they're exiting a business. Because The truth is, it's usually that person's identity. For 20 years, people knew me as the Magnum man. The people mistook my name for Magnum all the time, for crying out loud. So there were so many special points. I remember packing up my office uh, because now I'm going to hand it over to the new owner, who's now the new CEO, and I got to still put in some months. So I'm taking this smaller office next door. I'm packing up my office and I'm going, oh man, this is one of those moments. This is one of those moments where people will go, what have I done? Uh, I'm giving up my office. I'm giving up my life. I shouldn't have done it. But I loved it. I was packing with a smile because I'm like, this needs to happen. This is a necessary step for me to get to that next level. And here I am today getting, getting to share it with people. And if anybody is out there thinking about starting their own business, my encouragement to you is just start. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to dive in the deep end. And I think a lot of people get really worried about that and get confused by that. 
What about a side hustle? Is there any way you can start moving on your dreams in a part-time manner? Just get going. The fact is when you start walking down a path, you're going to recognize that path has twists and turns. You're going to learn so much just by walking. And then as soon as you start doing it, you you become better educated. You realize that the people you need to surround yourself with and the strategies you need to learn to be successful on this path. And it's going to be an exciting path. So I struggled with the same thing. I was talking to a colleague who was selling a business and he was saying the same thing. So I think a lot of people may struggle with this. My identity was completely wrapped up in my construction company before I sold it. And you're talking about people called you the Magno Man. You probably saw yourself as a Magno Man. How did you separate that Marcus is more than his company, he's more than what he's built, and be able to let go? Because sometimes we got to let go of something good to get something great. So can you walk me through that? Oh, Jenny, what a beautiful question, man. And I really love the way you just said that. Sometimes you have to let go of something good so that you can get your hands on something great. That's so beautiful. I, I think there's a lot of internal work that has to be done if you're considering selling your business. You got to recognize, especially when it comes to that identity, are you your business? Is that the full extent of your identity? And man, I hope that question alone challenges you to go, what? No, I'm way bigger than my business. That should be the key thing you're focusing on now. That's your guiding light, that I am bigger than just my business. And if you feel called to let go of your business, to sell your business, to move on to something else, follow that calling. That calling is trying to help you become perfectly aligned with who you're supposed to be on this planet. I'm such a fan of figuring out who am I supposed to be on this planet? And when I align myself with other people who are aligned, oh, you can feel it. You can feel it when someone is like, this is who I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. But then you can also just as easily see it when people aren't there. Those people are like, ah, oh, you know, this is what I do for a living. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing it anymore. I'm like, can I pause you right there? You're not. You're not. When you know you know, and you can move on that and it gets you excited. And I'll tell you, I fought it. I'll admit it. I fought it for like three years, maybe five years. I've been bored for so long in my last job. And don't get me wrong. I still loved the people I was around. I still felt so grateful for the opportunity to do what I was doing every day. I was changing lives every single day. That's really special. But it wasn't my calling anymore. And I fought it. So because of me fighting it, it was always friction. There was always that. I was, I was losing sleep at night. I, I wasn't feeling as healthy, as happy, as energetic as I should have been. And then when I listened to that call and started making the moves, I'm so excited about life again. I, I've got work ethic again. I, I love getting out of bed. I love getting good sleep. Even when I don't get great sleep and I wake up crazy early, I'm like, phenomenal. I've got more time to put into the things I love doing. And that is an exciting thing. Yeah, I think that that is definitely an indicator for me. It's like, I've got work ethic again. I'm excited about this. And I, and I want to pause and talk to the listeners. If you may be saying, well, I don't have a big $170 million business or I'm not trying to sell a company, but it, the same thing applies, right? With maybe you're identifying with, I'm a realtor or I'm a contractor or I'm an employee. I've been with the power company for 20 years and it's the same sort of thing that identity does get ingrained, whether it's you know your own business or something else and recognizing you don't have to do, if you're miserable and you're not liking this anymore, you don't have to do this. But can you speak to persistence, right? And sticking with it? Because there's definitely been times where I'm like, man, I, I'm discouraged. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go in a different direction. And I see a lot of people do that where they're constantly switching to the next shiny thing and they spend a decade flailing around instead of focusing on something that could have been great. Yes. Jennings, a beautiful opening to a conversation here because th that's really what's happening in this world. A lot of people stick with something for two months or four months or six months and they had really high expectations. Well, I should have been making a million dollars by now. And it's, can we take a pause on that? Which social media channel told you you should be making a million dollars after six months? Like we need to check our expectations. And when I say, you know, open up your mind to move on, open up your mind for something else. You know, first and foremost, I don't think I should have to give this caveat, but I'm going to give this caveat. It doesn't mean you just quit tomorrow. 
you know, you might have a mortgage, you might have a family you have to take care of. That's a real responsibility. So, so you have to consider that stuff. But it doesn't mean you can't start exploring, start looking into this thing. But your point about sticking with something and perseverance is so big. I am Mr. Consistency. I love talking about consistency and perseverance. It's all about endurance. The people who stay on the path longest are the ones who get the greatest benefits. Because what happens is the longer you stay on any given path, the more people drop off around you. And what's so unique about today, where we are in society on the timeline today, is that people drop off the path within 30 days. It's crazy. You think about the 60s and 70s, people got into a career, they were there for 40 to 50 years. Nobody deviated from that. Today, it's 40 to 50 days. So all you have to do is stay on that path long enough. 40 to 50 days, all of a sudden, a whole bunch of people are dropping off. 120 days. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm almost feeling alone on this path. You stick in there for five years. Now, again, I'm not just saying stick in any path. If you're like, yeah, but I hate it. That is a real indicator. You're not on the right path. It's okay to switch when, when you're feeling that. But the last caveat on that is this. Make sure you're not just trying out a bunch of paths expecting the world because that's a really big problem. And what you're going to do is you're going to jump to 100 different paths before you're 25 years old. And that's too much. you got to try out things long enough to make sure what is it that you don't like about it. And did you put your full effort into it to find out if you really like that path or not? Yeah, yeah. And not all businesses are created equal. I think you really need to think about is there an end game, right? If I work harder and I am more innovative and I invest more into this business and I and I continue down this path, is there a cap, right? Like there's no more future beyond a hundred grand, or can I actually build and scale this? And that's what I felt like with my business was okay, I can make a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year, but beyond that, it's just got really difficult to scale with the relationships with clients and the complexity of each different job versus a company like you know, supplements. Well, if you can get more clients, it's probably pretty easy to get more product and you can deliver that. And you can, and I mean, look at these big manufacturing companies and, and they can scale and multifamily can scale. Commercial real estate can scale. And I think that you have to think about that. Like, is my time and effort worth it in this field? Or if I get really, really good at this, there is going to be a large payoff. You know, you talked about working in this for 20 years. Is it worth it? And I would say, you're probably thinking, yeah, it probably was, right? <laughs> yeah. Listen, you are speaking my language, man. And it's so wild. There, I got a whole section of my book about exactly what you just said. And these were a few key turning points in my career. Because my first real business, I was selling supplements out of my bedroom. And I had $15,000 of supplements on my wall. And it was, it was wild. It was a cool lifestyle. Um, all my friends called me the healthy drug dealer for those years. And buddies would be texting me. Uh, actually, it was paging. That's uh, dating myself here. And they would come and they'd sit on my bed. They'd bring their buddies and I'd sell them supplements. And this was going great for a couple of years. But then I asked that exact question. I was like, can I get to making 10K a month? Because that was my goal at that time. And I was like, wow, I'd have to put in so much more effort. I'd have to invite so many dudes into my bedroom that I didn't know. That got weird. Uh, and... And the, ultimately, the answer was, no, I can't do it with this business in a way that I'm comfortable. So then immediately, my mind started to open up and go, okay, I'll take this into a store. And then I created a supplement store. And that turned into three stores. And then just a couple years later, I asked the exact same question. So now I was hitting my target, but now my, I had a bigger goal. And I was like, can I make 25000 a month out of these stores? Well, not the way they are. I'd have to open five or six more stores. I'm not willing to do that. Boom, my mind opened up and I accepted what was next. And that was building Magnum Nutraceuticals. And that was January of 2005. And then, and then the next big thing for, for your question of, is it worth it? One of the ways I love answering that, it's not about the finances. I know that's easy to say for a guy who just sold his big business. <laughs> But what's really exciting about is it worth it is you become a different person. You become a better version of yourself as you go down this path. And if it's not a better version, 
then you're on the wrong path. These are wonderful signals that are telling you if you're on the right path or not. On this path that I was on, I was learning constantly. I was being challenged. I was growing, but I was keeping a good balance and I was learning more about balance. I was recognizing and learning family comes first. And what did that do to the business when I had to say, no, family comes first in this situation. And if you can't do that, and it constantly is this struggle where it's like, well, I have to put my family aside. I have to put my family aside or my business is going to fail. For me, that meant I'm in the wrong business. I'm on the wrong path. Fortunately, it wasn't. But more importantly, I'd created these values and principles that that was a non-negotiable. Family will always come first. My health will come first before my business. And these are beautiful things to learn along the way. And if you don't start walking down the path, you might not ever have the chance to learn these things. You know, that health thing, I know that's your field. And for most of my life, I've really not enjoyed health too much. I mean, I would say I ate pretty healthy. My mom raised us to eat pretty healthy. But as far as like physical exercise, working out and all that stuff, it really wasn't until about four years ago that I committed to it, hired a trainer, started working out. And it was crazy because it was part of the evolution of becoming who I needed to be to build the business that I have now. And physical fitness and that clarity and, and treating myself better was a big part of that. And I, I talk to people every week and you know they're interested in joining the dealer when they want to buy apartments and et cetera, et cetera. And as the conversation progresses, it usually leads to look, you need to become a more valuable person. You need to have skills. You need to be able to you know, underwrite these deals. You need to be more confident. You're going to have to conquer your demons and conquer your fear, be able to talk to investors and take risks. And so the evolution of who you're going to become, the money will follow that. But it's not the other way around. But I, I love the bootstrap method too, because I encourage people. I'm like, don't go out there and try and buy a 200 unit apartment deal for your first deal. Like, go out there and get an eight unit, get a 12 unit, get kicked in the teeth a few times, figure out where you're bad, where you're good, figure out what your partners are made of when the chips are down. And then, as you know, it's a safe manner to do that, you can continue to scale. And then the exponential growth is there. But the guys that just blow up overnight, closing two, three, four thousand doors. I mean, we're seeing some of the ramifications. The tide is going out. There's some guys swimming with no bathing suit on. And it's painful. It's painful out there. So going back to your story, though, a lot of people can do... They can build a $10,000 a month business. They can maybe build a $20,000 a month business. What advice would you give or, or how could you guide people to, to making that leap to where you, know, you have a significant company, you know, multiple eight-figure company? Like that's Not everybody can do that. So what are some lessons that you learned from jumping from, okay, I've got three stores to, you know, I'm doing $170 million in revenue. Like that's a massive quantum leap and not everybody can do that. So I thank you. And I want to just start by saying really quick, brother, I'm so proud of you. The way you just talked about how you took control of your health, I think that's such a beautiful message. And that's, that's beautiful leadership right there because People listen to you, man. This podcast is for you. People are tuning in because they like you. And for you to say those words, I think is so beautiful because I think everybody needs to take control of their health and they need to recognize if they're not considering their health, if they're not challenging their body, they're missing out on being a better version of themselves in business. I can say with a hundred percent confidence, and it's not just because of I was in the supplement industry. But if I did not challenge my body the way I did, I would not show up with anywhere near the energy I show up with, the clarity. I wouldn't get the sleep. I wouldn't have the relationship I have with my family. We do amazing things. We go on hikes. I want to be that 80-year-old who's tossing my grandkids or my great grandkids up in the air. And I know for a fact I will be, unless God chooses to grab me sooner. But my point is, I think it's so beautiful and I think it's so important for people to do that you're going to become a better business person if you take care of your health. And you know what? It was the simplest thing. I wouldn't say easy, but it was the simplest thing. All it was is accountability. I just, I recognized I am not going to get my butt to the gym every week, three, four times a week without paying a trainer. Because if I say something, I'm going to do it. And I would say most of the people listening here are people of their word. And when you commit to that trainer, and you say, I'm going to show up and you're paying them to show up, like 
it just kind of takes the the discipline equation out of it, right? You don't have to be as disciplined. It's just like, this is what I got to do because I it's on my calendar. I told this guy I was going to be there. Bro, that's so beautiful. And what you're touching on is a beautiful principle, which is the most disciplined people on the planet never have to exercise their discipline because what they do is they set up situations where their discipline doesn't need to be exercised. So what you did is you said, I've got this trainer. He's expecting me there at 10 a.m. I've already paid for it. I have to show up. This is not a discipline issue. I'm just not a stupid who paid this guy and I'm not going to show up. So same with diet. People get so wound up in their diet, but how do you say no to the cookies? How do you say no to the popcorn? Here's how. They're not in my house. It's pretty easy to say no when it's not there. And so you develop these habits so the discipline gets removed from the equation. Uh, it's so true. You know, when the Doritos are there, I'm going to find my way to them. When they're not, you know, it's like, oh, well, I'll just eat apple. Or I'll just go to bed and not, not be a fat ass. Boom. <laughs> I love it, brother. So listen, I didn't want to escape the question that you asked. Yeah, going the back to the scale you, question. Yeah. So I'm going to start by saying this. You know, I, I think we all see social media and we all see the biggest businessmen on the news. And of course, these biggest businessmen like the Elon Musks and, and the Steve Jobs, they go from zero to hundreds of millions, if not tens of billions of dollars. And we go, well, that's a real businessman. Listen, I'm going to start by saying, that's not me. I, I don't even know how those guys, well, I know how they do it. And I, I was not built for that. I'm not built for this idea. Like I actually spend time with some, some incredible minds who have like million dollar a day burn rate. And if, in case anyone doesn't know what that means, that means their business is not only not profitable right now, it's burning a million dollars every single day. They've created this infrastructure that costs $1 million a day. And what they need to do is they need to get their revenues up or get more people investing in the company so they can keep that going long enough until it's a viable business. That sounds like hell to me. That's just because that's how I was built. So when I'm about to tell you my scaling process, mine took decades. And I'm okay with that. I was not the guy who's like, all right, let's just put it all the chips back on the table and let's bet on red and see what happens. Forget that. I grew up so poor and holding on so tight to every penny that I was like, well, if I'm going to grow, I'm going to grow nice and slow because I got to hold this. I mean, for anybody who grew up, grew up without a lot of money, the biggest fear is losing anything that you did gain. That's like the craziest fear that I had to deal with for so long. So did I take risks? Of course I took risks. But none of those risks involved, it's all on the table. I never once had to come home to my wife and go, babe, we might be out of a house tomorrow. So I just want to start by saying that. My growth was slow, smooth, and calculated. And again, when I talk about being on this journey, you, you learn so much, and, and especially if you invest into learning more and growing more, reading more books, and don't just consume these things. Take action. So on today's podcast, I know you're taking some good notes. I know you're getting some nuggets out of this. Don't just consume them. Take action on them. There are actionable steps. If it was health, you go, you know what? Tomorrow, I am going to work out at this time. I'm going to work out at this place. I need to leave my house at this time. You have an actionable plan and then you do it. And then you celebrate it. You say, I'm freaking awesome. I'm a man of integrity. I said I was going to do it and I went and did it and it felt horrible. No, I'm kidding. It's going to feel great. And you're going to feel good up here because you're doing those right steps. And if it's in business, just start moving down this path. And so that's what I did. I invested, I invested, I invested in growth. I invested in good leadership around me, good mentors around me, putting yourself in communities where people think bigger than you. I can't more highly encourage that. That's something that took me forever to learn. When you spend time with small thinkers, guess what? You think small. You spend time with big thinkers, you think big. And what's so awesome about it, I still do this to this day. I'm always trying to find bigger rooms to be in. Rooms where people are thinking bigger than me. So that way it's almost embarrassing for me to think or to bring up my small little thoughts. I want to think bigger. 
Yeah. That took me a long time to learn that lesson. I remember getting into paying for conferences, paying for masterminds, paying for training, and it was just so against my upbringing and cheap mentality of like, you know, you don't need anybody, just figure it out yourself. And yet those kind of groups are a game changer. And I see that with even our group. It's like people get in there and I mean, just the power of the pack and the borrowed beliefs like that guy, here he is. I can touch him. I can talk to him. And he's no smarter than me. He doesn't work any harder than me. He just has better ideas. He thinks bigger and and he executes. But you touched on something I want to hit on. I want to blow this up because on Instagram and a lot of these podcasts and people you hear, it's like, pour on the risk, right? And it's almost kind of a a masculine rah-rah, like, look, we laid it all on the line over and over and over again. But when you talk to the real person who's actually done it, it's not that, that's not the story. The story is, I took measured bets, right? I took heads I win, tails I lose very little. I'm going to take that bet and see if I can get exponential return for the amount of risk. I'm reading this book, Dondo Investor, which is like Indian kind of thesis on investing and taking risk. And they followed the Patel family and how they took over the motel industry in America. And, you know, they took very small calculated risks with large upside. And I've seen that in deals I've done where I bought something that was really messed up, but I bought it for so cheap. I was like, well, even with it half full, it's still kind of breaking even. If I can make it better than that, I can make money, right? It's like, if I lose... I'm going to lose a little bit, but even worst case scenario, I'm still going to probably break even. But if I win and I get lucky and the Fed lowers rates and the market heats up, then maybe I can win big. Instead of this just, it sounds sexy on a little 30 second reel of you know laying it all out there and making these massive bets, but it's survivor bias, right? You only see the guys that made it. You don't see the hundreds laid on the waste, the waste pile. Brother, I so agree with you. I mean, we're not even talking 1%. That 1% of these guys who stick around long-term. And this is so good. So anybody listening, if this this is resonating with you, why don't you take a peek at how many of these guys have been talking this way for a long time? And how many of these guys, maybe you noticed them six months ago or a year ago, they took, you took notice. Oh yeah, this guy said I can be a millionaire by next year. Is he still on there? Is he still kicking around? Man, I can literally name, I think, two, like the Cardone and, and Gary V. Other than that, there are so many who used to be, oh, you can do it, just bet it all, go big, go risk. And it's like, where are they now? Where have they gone? Oh, shocker. They're out of it. They're out of it. They're out of it. But the guys, I don't want to say like me, but the, the slow pace, the, the let's grow at a calculated risk. And I love how you put it, like you watch for the bigger upside. So the risk can be small, bigger upside. Do these deals come along all the time? No, you have to be picky. But what's so wild is so many of us get so excited about a deal that looks a little bit good. And it's like, oh, my emotions, I I have to, because there could be a decent upside. There's a bunch of risk. But then you focus on that. And if you had just waited, maybe it was three months or six more months, there was a better, juicier, less risky deal with a bigger upside. So just stay calm. Keep emotion out of it. That's huge. A big part of what Jennings and I are talking about right now is the emotion. You're looking at social media going, oh, why am I not like that yet? Oh, my wife would love me more if, oh, I'd get a a better, hotter, whatever. That's all emotion. If you just stay calm with it and go, you know what? I just want to be the best version of myself. And also what I loved you talking about is Yeah, we were raised, I think as men, and I know there's lots of ladies listening too, but as men, we're raised to be like, no, you should just figure it out for yourself. And no, you don't pay somebody else for that. But what's so crazy is the people who are getting the furthest ahead are the ones going, oh yeah, I paid someone. Oh yeah, I asked for someone for directions. Oh yeah, I just got in that room. To give you an idea, in the last 12 months, I spent $250,000 on personal growth. That's how serious I am about growing myself. And another shocker, the last 12 months have been the best growth for me and my businesses and my investing in my entire life. Not even close. Well, yeah, it's, I consider myself a copycat. You know, I am not super creative. I am not like coming out there developing these great ideas. You know, let's tokenize real estate with crypto and be the, it's like, what has this person done? 
Did it work? Okay, I can copy that. And even, you know, in buying existing businesses versus startups, it's like you're just kind of copycatting the success of the prior guy and building on that. And I think there's no shame in that. It's it's because I know a couple people, I can count them on my hand, that they've got a million crazy bright ideas. But if you look at the results of their life, there's nothing there, you know, versus slow growth and steady application of principles that have worked and will work because that exponential scale will come. It's kind of like that book, The Slight Edge. I mean, it's just like, it takes a time. In the beginning, it doesn't look, I mean, you're talking 10 years with this much growth and then the last 10 years tails up. Oh, yes. And, you know, there are no trophies for people who do it on their own. And uh, for some reason, we have it in our mind, like, no, 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 I got to do it on my own. It's, it's embarrassing to whatever. No, it's not. Copy someone else. It's, I love this principle. It's modeling. I model after someone who's already done it. And what they're doing is they're teaching me how to do what, what took them maybe 20 years to do. I can do it in four. Why wouldn't I want to do that? Why do I want to go down that same path, spend 20 years trying to figure out the same stuff that they've already figured out? And they're going, oh, I'll teach you. I'll teach you all the ways to navigate this road. So who did you or how did you learn to scale the um, Magnum Nutraceuticals online? Oh, man. I was fishing for mentors. Um, I came across Tony Robbins when I was 15 years old, and he put me on a different path for my life. And ever since, he's been a father figure in my life. Uh, I'm in Tony's Platinum crew now, which is this tighter-knit community of like high achievers. And he's, he and that group have taught me so much about business, scaling business, exiting business, mindset, uh, empowerment. There's so much that you can learn from great mentors, but it's not just him. Ed Milet is one of my greatest mentors. Man, I love the way this man talks. He's such a man of love and of service. Uh, John Gordon, another amazing mentor of mine. So much love out of this guy. And these guys are absolutely changing the world. They are making massive impact. And that's what I want for my life. So when you look for a mentor, don't just look for dollar signs. So anybody out there in business, it's not just about, well, he's made a whole bunch of money, so that'll be my mentor. No, he made his money his way and with his personality. You got to make sure that aligns. There's lots of guys out there who've done amazing things in business. I want nothing to do with the way they did it. But guys like Ed Milet, guys like John Gordon, I'm going, I will listen to every word they say because their heart is very similar to mine. The way that they love, the way that they serve, the way that they give back. That's the kind of man I want to be, the leader I want to be. And that's how you're going to change lives. And that's how you're going to find your proper alignment. Otherwise, again, you're constantly fighting who you're supposed to be instead of becoming the amazing person that you could be. Yeah. I saw Ed Milet at the uh, 10X conference in Vegas, and I think it was like 2018 or 19, and that was the first exposure I'd had to him. And uh, his talk, I mean, it blew me away. And I bought the recording. I re-listened to that talk multiple times, and I've heard it before. But you know that vision that he talks about of at the end of his life, he thinks that you know God will reveal to him the man that he could have been, his full potential, and he wants to be as close to that as possible. It doesn't want to be somebody that he doesn't even recognize. And uh, it just stuck with me. Uh, he's, he's a powerful, powerful character. So can you tell us about the mechanics, a little bit of like the actual exit? So did you put it for sale? Did you go through a business broker? How did you structure that deal? That's a great question because the truth is many businesses out there don't have any idea how to sell. And it's really tough to sell a business. Like, I had very clean books. In my opinion, I was like, this is going to be the easiest sell. I reached out to a broker and the broker just happened to be sending me uh, these beautiful magazines for the last five years. And I respected that. And, and I took note of it. So I contacted them like, if I was interested in selling my business, what would it look like? And they started going down this path a little bit with me. And it was incredible how much work had to be done. I think, I think it took three or four months of of hard work cleaning the company up, shining it up, if you will, and not, not in a like, falsifying things way, but just like making it so clean that someone can come in and go, okay, I can really see what this business really is about and how it's doing, and now I can make a proper offer. And so the broker then uh, not only helped me clean it up, 
but then made a bunch of introductions. They put it out to their network. So if you're considering selling and you're going to talk to a broker, first and foremost, I'd say, find out how big this broker's list is and how, how many businesses do they sell per year? If they're selling two or three businesses per year, this is not the right, this is not the right broker. The chance of them selling yours is very small. I don't remember the number that mine did, but I want to say they sold like a thousand businesses the last year. That's spectacular. Now, that means that they've got this huge pool of investors. They've got people who, who respect them and have money in hand so that they can just make introductions. So after we had these big conversations of who I'd like to sell to, because I'm a man of integrity and I built my company on integrity, I wasn't just going to sell it to anybody. This was not a money exit where I'm like, ah, just get me the dollars. I don't care. So it was really specific, the kind of person, the kind of character we were looking for in selling the business. And they introduced me to a bunch. I had a whole bunch of like blind dates on Zoom, people getting to know me, knowing what I've done with the business, why I've done it with the business, and for me to get to know them. Am I interested? And the truth is, when I sold, we had, it might've been four firm offers and the one I went with was really the only one. I mean, we could have kept going, but the one offer, uh, we, we, it, it accelerated very quickly. He just, he seemed like the right guy for the position. There was one, one was a venture capital company. I was like, I don't, I don't want to just put this into a VC company and just, you know, it's, I don't mean to be rude to any VCs out there, but it felt heartless. It felt like, yeah, you'll just be one of the 40 companies that we own. And it's like, uh, I've made some serious promises to my clients that I still want kept even after I'm gone or at least for a period of time so that they can figure their crap out, not just, hey, all the promises are gone now because Marcus is gone. So the broker route was a good route for me. Okay, and so you, you picked a horse and you went into a due diligence period. Was there like a, a earn out period where you had to stay on as CEO or how did that work? Great question. So I agreed and offered six months. Now, just so everybody knows, that's a very short period of time. Yeah. You have the decision to make ahead of time. What is the number you're actually comfortable with? I've talked to people who did much longer, like one year, two years. And so far of the, let's say, 12 or 14 people that I know who sold and signed on for longer contracts like that, every one of them lost their mind during that time and ended up backing out early, losing them millions of dollars. Because you have to understand what you're actually saying. You now no longer have control. You used to get to make all the decisions and direct the ship. Now you have to sit back while somebody is going to direct it for sure in a different way. And sometimes in a way that you completely disagree with, but now you have to still be part of it and go, yeah, everything's going great. That messes with your head so bad. And for me, I also knew I had a calling elsewhere. And, and God really put it on my heart and said, six months, that's it. So when I came to the negotiating table, I said, six months, that's it. And of course, they're like, no, we really need you for a year. Six months, that's it. And it was take it or leave it. And if, if it was like, no, then we're not going to do it. Okay, no problem. Someone else will. You were that firm on it. Yeah, oh, I knew. I knew I had my next calling already waiting for me. Now, did you have to own or finance them? Did they bring financing in cash? Or, or is it a delayed if they hit certain milestones within X amount of years? So a good chunk of it was up front, a good chunk. And then there was uh, monthly, and then there's after one year and after two years. Not to hit any milestones. Um, they wanted that, and I said, no. I said, listen, I've got 19 years of experience, and my numbers are going exactly like this. So if you come in and they start going like this, is that the business's fault or is that the new ownership's fault? Well, I'm not, I'm not betting on you. I don't know you. You can bet on the company because I got 19 years of, of perfect books showing what it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so not everybody can make those kind of demands. I mean, everybody's business is different. So some people, you might have to accept that. And you just have to really have those hard conversations with yourself. But again, going back to what you and I were originally talking about, Jennings, this is where it's so good to have a community. It's so good to have mentors. So you can talk to other people who have been in similar situations who can walk you through it and give you some peace about your decision. So you're not making that decision on your own. And you're not every day going, ah, did I do it right? Did I do it right? And if it 
God forbid, goes wrong a little bit, you're not going, ah, I'm so stupid, I did this. You don't need any of that guilt in your life. So having other people around you who've been through it, who can coach you through it, who can talk you through it, it's going to help you out so much. Yeah. So let's take it from there because we're, we're running long. Where are you going now, right? You went through this huge turmoil. You made a huge decision. God's called you into something else. What is that? What are you doing now? What are you building? Uh-oh. Thank you, brother. I, this is the thing I've never been more excited about my whole life. It's called playabiggergame.com. And it's a calling for anybody who feels like they could be or should be or, or just is called to play this bigger game in life. Like what they're doing right now is not enough. And I know it. I know it in my heart. I should be doing more with my life. This is the community I'm building for you. And we're inviting you in to say, come, be surrounded by big thinkers. Be surrounded by people who are going to challenge you and grow with you in a loving and respectful way. And it's not an open community. The first thing is people have to go through an interview process. We have to make sure we're the right fit for you and that you're the right fit for us. And that's how we're going to keep it, this ultra loving community. The leaders who are in this community are some of the greatest minds I've ever come across on the planet. And they've truly been called into this beautiful community. So we have leaders in all these different categories who are going to help you be your healthiest self, your best in relationships, your best in parenting, your best in business in so many ways. And it's not just about money success. It's about fulfillment. You know, you could have all the money in the world, but you've got bad relationships at home. I'm telling you that money is now worthless. You might as well throw it in the fireplace. So this is about finding true fulfillment and joy and bliss in life and surrounding yourself with people who are on that same journey, lifting each other up, helping each other to think bigger. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if your average right now is bringing you down, come hang out with my five. Let's bring Mm. you up. And so, yeah, that goes to my next question. Who is your... I guess, avatar, or who do you feel like this program, this community is set up to help? That's a beautiful question. Number one, my key demographic, my key avatar is that high achiever, even if they haven't achieved yet. Hmm. (laughs) I like that. If you are going, Marcus, I know I'm a high achiever. I know I've got it in me. Like I'm, I'm supposed to be doing something so big. I know it. People have been telling me since I was a kid, but I, I just don't know where to go. I don't know where to turn. That was me. I didn't have my dad in my life and my mom had to go back to school full-time and work full-time. I didn't know where to turn. I knew I had this in me and I just scraped by for years and years. It would have been so amazing to have this kind of community for me so that they could have brought that out in me earlier. Now I'm not looking back and going, oh, poor Marcus. I'm very happy with how my story turned out, but I want to be there for the next Marcus. I want to be there to help you bring that out in you. If you know that's you inside, you know you have more to give, you know you have more to do on this planet, I believe it 100%. I know it to be true. And I would love to have even 1% of a role in your life in bringing that out of you, in lifting you up, in celebrating with you, making you the best version of you you can be so you can have the biggest impact in this world and you can find the most fulfillment and the most joy possible. Yeah, absolutely. And I I can see that, you know, through your passion and and how these other guys have influenced you and wanting to give back, right? You've built your business, you've sold your business. Now you want to have that relational impact with a community uh, and help them play a bigger game. You're reaching down and helping the next guy up. So I love yeah. it. I love it. Thank you, brother. Can I tell you one last really exciting thing about playbiggergame.com? Absolutely. The overarching purpose of this business, which is just wild, it it really is to lift people up. But then God gave me the wisdom and ability recently on how to acquire other businesses. There are so many businesses who are very profitable who are going to be closing their doors over the next five years. Like over 70%. I know that's a crazy high statistic. This is a fact. It's insane. So I'm going to be acquiring these businesses, but my CEO run is over. That's not my job anymore. So the people who are going to be lifting up inside this community, these are the people who are going to graduate to, how would you like to be CEO of this company? And how would you like to have some ownership that you can earn in this company? 
So not only are we going to be lifting them up and bringing out that high achiever in them, but then we're going to give them a, a vehicle to make sure that they can show the whole world and impact the whole world with their beautiful new skills that they've discovered. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's awesome. And that's kind of a more tangible piece of what you're trying to do, where you can take what you've learned the last 20 years and you can help somebody implement that, right? Side by side. You're not necessarily doing it for them, but you know those critical moments where they need advice and they need decision and they need guidance to have somebody that's been there to nudge them and say, "Hey, let's let's look at this option. Let's look, let's do it this way." That's huge, you know. And that seems like kind of what um, Alex Ramosi seems to be doing with his program, right? He's built his company, sold it, and now he's got this incubator of all these businesses where he'll partner with people, which is a pretty unique idea. Okay, so people, how can they get to know you? Like, we, we you have a book, and tell us a little bit about that book because I think that's a great way for somebody to kind of get to know Marcus. Tell us the title of that book. Thank you so much. Shocker name, Play a Bigger Game. <laughs> okay. It's the Easy seven, enough. Uni- seven universal principles to find true fulfillment and win at life. Okay. So Play a Bigger Game by Marcus Collius, K-A-U-L-I-U-S, and then yeah. playabiggergame.com. Can they buy the book on the website? Playabiggergame.com? Yes. Okay. okay will soon be available on the website as well. But uh, they can reach out to me on the website. And also, come, come check me out on Instagram. I pour out this stuff daily for people. I just, I really want to encourage people. I want to lift people up. And, uh, but also reach out to me, DM me, please. I check my DMs. I respond to my DMs. If you're listening to this and it made any impact on you at all, reach out to me, encourage me, please. I need that encouragement, but I'm going to also encourage you. I'm going to breathe some, some love and life into your life. And that would be my absolute blessing and honor to do that. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, Marcus, I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing your wealth of wisdom with the listeners. I know I've enjoyed it, learned a lot. So um, just want to say thanks again, man. Brother, I'm so grateful to have been here. You're doing an amazing job. I just want to thank you. And listen, anybody who else is listening who has yet to go and rate this podcast, come on. Do Jennings a favor, man. He puts in so much work into this. The guy's an amazing human being. He's pouring out. He's bringing amazing guests. The least we can do is go and rate this podcast. Give him a five out of five. Tell other listeners that this is amazing because this is how people find you. If if you've got great ratings, they're going, okay, I'll check this out. And it bumps him up the list. It's going to get him more exposure. He deserves it, people. Let's make it happen for him. Hey, well, thanks. I appreciate that. I think you're the first guest that said that, but I appreciate it for sure. All right, guys, we'll have a great week and make sure you take some time to unlock your life. Peace. This is the podcastfactory.com.